You're on the air with AM 800 WRTH, broadcasting out of... And thank you for tuning in. The Paranormal Investigation television show is a phenomenon in genre all of its own. One of the first and most popular was Ghost Hunters, a show about a couple of plumbers who occupy their off hours haunting houses that are reportedly haunted. Another favorite is Ghost Adventures, a show about parabromal investigators who travel the country and the world looking for spirits. There are plenty of others, but I've noticed a trend in many of the shows from the United States, especially these aforementioned ghost hunters and ghost adventures. Provocation. It's one of the tactics employed by a paranormal investigator to coax a reaction out of a spirit. In the most basic of terms, you're trying to piss off the ghost. Say you're in a haunted jail, and the ghost of a man who murdered his wife lingers around one of the cell blocks. Well, perhaps you'll wander down that block, calling out his name, insulting him as a coward for killing an innocent woman. Maybe you'll shout out to him, asking what it was like when the rope tightened around his neck when they hung him for the crime. If you're at all into this kind of thing, Provocation is a powerful but possibly dangerous strategy. After all, you're dealing with the paranormal and, by definition, something from another world. How angry do you really want that entity to be? To the credit of these programs, and programs like them where provocation takes center stage, they often show the consequences of antagonizing a ghost. The investigators make it ill, almost to the point of vomiting, and indeed I have seen episodes where they did actually throw up. Something throws hard objects at them. They may feel overtaken by emotion. In rare cases, they're assaulted through scratching, welts, shoving, slapping, and hitting. As I said, this tactic is popular on American paranormal television, but what about our neighbors across the pond? I've been a fan of British television since before I was a teenager. One evening, I was up very late, especially for a 10 or 11 year old boy. I had a cold and I couldn't sleep for the coughing. My mom gave me some medication and said that it was okay for me to watch television while it kicked in. She knew I'd be asleep soon enough and she likely wanted to go back to bed herself. So I sat down in a dark living room and started flipping through the channels. We had cable at the time, and I saw shows I'd never heard of before, as well as shows I had heard about, but they were on well past my bedtime. Who was this Johnny Carson guy, anyway? Boring, is what I thought he was. Hey, I was only ten or so. I wasn't exactly a cultured individual at this point. So I kept flipping, channel after channel. News, talk show, lousy movie, another talk show, masterpiece theater, oh my god, women dancing half-naked, another movie, wait a minute. I flipped back to the half-naked dancing women, of course I did. And there they were, dancing to a French song that I didn't understand, all along with a chubby, dorky-looking guy with a face that positively radiated happiness. Well, yeah... He was dancing with beautiful women who, as I previously mentioned, were half-naked. No wonder he was happy. The dance number ended, and then a sketch started up. The guy was rapidly patting an old bald guy on the head. He was telling ribald jokes and recited poems that would have gotten me sent to the principal's office if I had recited those at school. And oh my god, he was funny. His name was Benny Hill, and he was kind of my introduction to British television. Not long after that, I discovered Monty Python, and that was it. I became a lifelong fan. So it goes, a while back, I found out about a British paranormal television show. I wasn't aware of it because, for the most part, I kind of stopped watching TV. It's nothing against TV or the shows or anything like that. It's more to do with my absolute 
hatred of advertising. And if nothing else, TV is a medium designed to sell you things with occasional interruptions by the programs that you wanted to watch in the first place. But this is the age of Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime. This show was on the ladder, my friend told me, so I grabbed my iPad, installed the Prime Video app because I hadn't had it on there, and brought up season one of Most Haunted. It is the most British ghost show imaginable. Most Haunted features one Yvette Fielding, the youngest person to ever host the popular UK children's show Blue Peter. Now, if you're not British, you likely have no idea what Blue Peter is, but I can tell you that this is a kid's show that has been on the air longer than Sesame Street or Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And if you're wondering why I'm telling you this, just, just hang on. I have a point. It's just a little further down the line. Yvette was just 17 when she hosted Blue Peter, and one of her segments was voted as the most favorite Blue Peter moment ever. If you're curious, it involved roller coasters. After hosting a hugely popular kids show, she went on to do other things, like hosting another popular kids show called What's Up Doc. Now, with Most Haunted, you can watch one of Britain's premier television personalities and children's show hosts swear like an absolute sailor when something scares the crap out of her. Something went <gasps> down, down the back of my head. For yeah. sake, I'm not joking you. Please, oh, no, 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 let's get, get out. Okay. Th there was something that okay. went <gasps> like that down my ear holes. For the Americans, it's kind of like discovering that there's a new detective on Law & Order SVU, played by Maria from Sesame Street. But it's not the host of Most Haunted that makes it the most British ghost show in the aisles. It's not the location they visit, even though the locations are wonderful historic sites around the UK. No? The difference between all those American shows and this British show comes down to one thing. How they talk to the ghosts. American shows follow a standard sort of provocational pattern. First, insult the ghost. Second, insult the ghost some more. Third, recoil in horror as something happens. And fourth, bleep everything the investigator says for the next five seconds. That's not how most haunted works. No. Yvette has a different tactic. First, her team of investigators typically consists of her, her husband Carl, parapsychologist Dr. Kieran O'Keefe, and the crew. And by the crew, I mean everyone from the audio guy to the makeup girl. They're all involved. Everybody gets into the investigation. And indeed, Catherine Howe, the makeup girl, becomes a long-standing member of the team even though she's absolutely scared out of her mind most of the time. Yvette and Carl are competent investigators. Dr. O'Keefe is the skeptical parapsychologist, and then there are a host of mediums and psychics, including the hilariously bad Derek Akora for the first few seasons. A bit of scuttlebutt and paranormal gossip if you have just a second. Apparently Derek Akora was actually outed as a fake by Dr. Kieran O'Keefe himself. He was dismissed from the show soon after. Akora, I mean. O'Keefe stayed on for quite a while longer. The show follows a fairly standard format. The vet welcomes the viewer to the location, and there's some historical information. A psychic comes in and tries to give them more information. And then the lights out investigation begins. Where many American shows call attention to the investigators using technological equipment like K2 meters, SB7 and SB11 spirit boxes, infrared scanners, and everything else except Dr. Egon Spangler's PKE meter, the most haunted crew usually rolls in with their cameras, perhaps a digital audio recorder, and... and that's it. 
There were a few episodes where Dr. O'Keefe used an infrared camera, but that's about as technical as they ever got. It's during the investigation that the differences between the countries becomes most apparent. The most haunted crew wanders around the location, calling out to the spirits and politely asking questions and saying thank you when things happen. It's quite the usual for a vet to enter a room, begin talking, and asking if the spirit is there and if they could give her a sign of their presence. Something slams or thing moves, a vet will scream just a little and possibly swear a little more, and then she politely thanks the spirit for their efforts. There are times she even apologizes for her language. Being that it's British TV, some words are bleeped, but they're different than what you'd hear censored in America. I can't say why that is, because I don't know what time of day these shows originally aired, but there are instances of Yvette and members of her crew dropping F-bombs, and occasionally those go unbleeped, so I'm assuming this sometimes aired during the post-9, post-10 o'clock hour in the UK. Provocation is rarely used on Most Haunted, and only comes into play when something actually just pisses off one of the hosts, not the ghosts. One episode features a vet getting upset with the spirit, and she gives them a verbal dressing down. I mean, she just rides the spirit from one end of the room to the other. While she's doing it, there are noises and weird sounds, and things are being moved around or thrown. And she's just standing there unfazed and unwavering, giving this ghost what for and pointing her finger while doing it. It's fantastic. And this isn't just Yvette. Often her husband will go off with Stu, the cameraman. And that, in itself, is its own special treat. Because Stu and Carl are friends, and their banter would make a show all on its own. They'll be up in the back end of some disused tower in a 600-year-old castle, and things start getting weird. Stu has been hit with things thrown by unseen forces, and he thanks the ghosts for doing it. Sure, Stu and Carl might hightail out of that tower like Shaggy and Scooby heading for the kitchen, and as they slam the door shut behind them, they're thanking the spirits for communicating with them. It's so utterly different than American ghost television in other ways. There's less drama, and for lack of a better word, there's less upselling. I think the British can fall back on their history a little bit better than the Americans can. It's like the comedian Eddie Azard once said, the Americans will be proud of a house that's been restored to how it looked 150 years ago. Meanwhile, there are apartment buildings in London that are twice that age, let alone the houses that date back to the 1400s. There's not so much check out this freaking castle more than there is, eh, here's this episode's castle. If I didn't know better, I'd refer to these ghostly TV shows as a guilty pleasure. The problem is, is when I watch these shows, be it Most Haunted or Ghost Adventures or a paranormal documentary of some kind, I don't feel a single pang of guilt. I'm entertained, and I'm enjoying myself, and that takes something special since, like I said, normally, I despise TV. Granted, I typically only watch these shows on services like Amazon Prime, Netflix, or the truck that they fell off the back of. So, when it comes to paranormal TV into that sort of thing. Check out Most Haunted. You'll find most of it on Amazon Prime Video. The locations are stunning all on their own, and the silliness inherent in the show is made even better by the fact that it's a British kind of silliness. It's entertainment, crafted by people who want to entertain you. And I hope you have been entertained, dear listener. And thank you for tuning in to WRTH AM 800. As always, thanks for listening, and have a happy and safe Halloween.